Hey guys, it's Trice here, formerly known as Mr. Jack and Triple Zero, back with Automation the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds called the Turbo Viceroy Relic 4WS. This top of the line model of the Viceroy, made by French manufacturer Turbo, has comfort, prestige, and even four wheel steering. Yep, you heard that right. Instead of having the front tires steer like any ordinary vehicle, the rear tires also steer as you turn the wheel in any direction. It's an uncommon feature on cars in real life due to its complexity and cost, but since I edited the car's file, it's been added without any additional cost. Anyways, I'll explain how I made this car throughout this portion of the video. The code used to make the four-wheel steering system work is derived from the Skyflash VTEC 4WS made by SkyIMX in the BeamNG repository. You can check it out with the link in the description below. It has a lap time of 1 minute, 39 seconds, 20 milliseconds at the quote-unquote Top Gear test track, and 2 minutes, 42 seconds, 95 milliseconds at the automation track, it has a top speed of 139 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 in 9.66 seconds. This vehicle is powered by a slightly powerful version of the Mitsubishi 6G72 engine that produces 158 horsepower and 169.4 pounds feet of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of 13.7 miles per gallon and weighs 2,914.8 pounds or 1,322.1 kilograms. And for the market, it doesn't do a whole lot of good in the top 4 markets that it competes in. It surprisingly considers itself as a pony car, even though it doesn't have a small V8 engine like the Ford Mustang, but whatever. In terms of how I made the Viceroy, the panel material will be made out of regular steel with a ladder chassis made out of corrosion-resistant steel. With a front transverse engine placement and the front suspension uses a double wishbone and the rear suspension uses a semi-trailing arm. With some minor quality adjustments to reduce the weight of this vehicle. For the engine, it's a V60 degree V6 engine made out of cast iron with the bore set to 95mm and the stroke, I lowered it from 90mm to 89.4mm due to some discrepancies trying to lower the variant capacity for the stroke to get the actual size for the 672 engine, and we're using single overhead cam 2 valves made out of aluminum. For the crankshaft, we're using forged steel with lightweight forged cob rods and regular cast pistons, and for the variant capacity to match the actual 672 engine, the bore has lowered down to real life measurement of 91.1 millimeters, and a stroke at 76 millimeters to get the true engine size to 2,972 cubic centimeters, or just shy of 3 liters. Or or just exactly 3 liters if you want to round it up. For the compression, it is set an above normal 10.0 to 1 ratio with the cam profile jumping up just a hair to a 43. For the fuel system, we're using a multi-point EFI of a single throttle per cylinder configuration with a standard intake running on regular fuel, with the fuel mixture increased to a 12.9, the ignition timing retarded just a bit to a 30, and the RPM limit is set at 6,000 RPM. For the exhaust, we're using some short cast headers with dual exhaust with the exhaust diameter set to 44.4 millimeters, which equals to 1.75 inches. With a three-way counter converter, no first muffler, but the second muffler is reverse flow to reduce the amount of noise coming out of this engine. For the drive type, our only option thanks to it being a transverse engine, we got ourselves a front wheel drive automatic 4 speed with the top speed set at 140.6 miles per hour. For the tires, we're using some radio hard long life tires with the front and rear tire width set to 205 millimeters front and back, running on some 15 inch alloy rims. For the brakes, we got ourselves some solid discs for the front and back, but we're using a solid disc 2 piston for the front with its size set to 290 millimeters, and the rear is set at 230 millimeters at a 1 piston. Pad type reduced it a little bit to a 46, brake bias slightly adjust also to a 62, 38. Under tray, there's going to be nothing much. No under tray, adjust the brake airflow quite a bit. And looking at the interior of this vehicle, and I think the first time on this channel or this automation general showing off these videos, we got a sunroof. We got the front panel sunroof, rear panel, and taking a better look at the interior and everything, we got leather seats front and back, including armrests, door handles, window control switches, mirror controls, all that good stuff. 
That means we got ourselves a premium interior with a premium cassette player, even though it just says auto reverse, radio controls, and pretty much everything. And it's also got an onboard computer system just to throw that out. So for the safety and everything, we got variable hydraulic power steering with ABS brakes and advanced 1980 safety standards. And last but not least for the suspension of the vehicle, we got some progressive springs with gas mono tube dampers and our only option pass the sway bars running on a slightly adjusted normal preset. All I did was increase the spring stiffness and damper stiffness and that's pretty much it. Despite only three problems wrong with this vehicle, such as the rear brake force being too high, clearance issues, and the rear tires being pretty wide, let's go to BMG Drive and test this vehicle out. So here we are at the map of Utah, USA, and taking a brief look at this vehicle here to recap the design and everything. So with the styling of this vehicle, preferably like your rear reflectors where the turn signal indicators are from the side and front, I try to give it somewhat that vibe of the Chrysler K platform, kind of like your Chrysler New Yorkers or LeBarons and some other vehicles where you have like this old boxy-ish styling, even though this is more aerodynamic than like the Chrysler New Yorker where you got like kind of boxy front end and then like a freaking flat ass rear end where it goes like this, a bit sharp angle and then down that. And to make things even more interesting, we got some headlight wipers right here. Like some luxury cars where they have some front wipers for the headlights, which I kind of find this interesting, right? They got wipers that actually cleans the headlights, which is pretty much seen on like high-end luxury cars like your Audis, Mercedes, Benz, and some other cars. I decided to put that in because why not? And lastly, for the interiors, you see with the seats here, and wow, this came up really, really shiny for the leather seats here. Some tan leather seating with some dark brown in the middle here for the front seats, back seats, and missing colors because I forgot to put its own custom color on here thanks to the Beam&G automation exporter. I need to get back into habit of this. This also includes the speedometer too, where if you got the 80s mod in automation where it's got like this lit up dash and everything, but it comes up as like white on here, you got to put its own colors and match them so that the automation Beam&G exporter could recognize these colors instead of coming out as white like this. And also with the four wheel steering system as a steer to left, the rear tires steer right, and as it steer right, the rear tires steer left, as you can see here. Let me demonstrate this right here. So left, right, left, right. The only cars I know that had four-wheel steering, which I think is the Mitsubishi 3000 or something like that, or the GTO back in the 90s. I mean, they were a thing in the 90s, but now it seems like everybody's doing them and making their own versions of a four-wheel steering system. So while I'm sitting right here, let's start by doing the base performance test with this vehicle. The first one we're going to be doing is a 0 to 62 acceleration test. Next would be a 62 to 0 brake test. And lastly, a top speed run, which this vehicle here, being a little over a ton and a half with a 158 horsepower V6 engine being front wheel drive, I don't think it's going to reach it. You probably need like a two mile road to get the top speed of this vehicle at 140 miles an hour. But we'll figure it out real soon. So right now, start with the acceleration test now. Accelerate, we go a mild wheel spin, so steer a little bit to get back on the road, back in my lane, go into second gear, so 0 to 62 in 8.55 seconds of 437.19 feet. Not too bad, a little like a second quicker than we got in automation, so let me break a little bit and go for a brake test, so go to realistic gearbox, and we're going 60, okay, 62, get ready to brake, now. So, brakes engaged, 62 to 0 in 3.27 seconds of 137.50 feet. Why are the hazard lights going off for a 1980s vehicle? And not only that, my rear reflectors got indicators too. I thought I turned these off. So, time and distance wise, not a good fan of the time, distance, eh. Probably because the brakes are a little too strong in this vehicle. Hence, the tires chirping when they break down their high low despite having ABS brakes. So for a top speed run already in effect, we do get pretty much the same time and distance, 0 to 60 wise. But in terms of top speed, I think I doubted this vehicle big time like freaking Luka Doncic. Like the analysis thinking that he's going to be a bust or a mediocre player back in the day when he was first drafted. But coming up to our first corner, 120 miles an hour, let's see the four-way steering Kick in, see the rear, uh, barely see the rear tires, but uh, focus on the road. Okay, 127. And drift deja vu. Oh my god. So top speed run. Unfortunately, I failed. I think I would have failed before I got to the tunnel here. So top speed run. Unfortunately, I failed. 127 miles an hour was our speed that we got prior to the crash. So in terms of the destruction of vehicles, so looking at the damage, we got the headlights gone. Well, 
Only one survived. This guy here. Wow. So if I turn on the headlight, the glass lights up, that lights up. Are any loose pieces around? Like, what is this? Is this part of the headlight? That's the headlight. Well, bruh. I don't get it, man. It's like some stupid witchcraft, I swear, man. So we bent this vehicle up big time up here, crashing into a sign that says, what? Moab? Yeah, Moab 53, Canyonlands, National Park 59, West Canyon Rock, turn left. So crash that sign, we got this type of destruction, this vehicle went from oh, kind of straight looking and then pew, bent right here. Just bent that thing like a damn twig or something. Rear end, you can see the destruction there. Left side, oh yeah. Right side, Kool-Aid. Which I pretty much swapped that around, Kool-Aid, oh yeah. So that is it with your vehicle. So now let's take this on to a time trial by, uh, I think we'll stay at this map here in Utah. So where is Utah? Right here. So go to Utah by going to the road course map by doing two laps of this here race here with a, let's not do a rolling start. Going to noon hours with this here vehicle. So take you to the starting line of this road course right now. So here we are at the start and finish line. We're back pretty much like a 10 feet away, 15 feet away from the start and finish line with this nice chrome ass trim going alongside the vehicle. And not only that, does the, uh, the V6 badge kind of comes out okay, but not that great, which I kind of noticed in this vehicle. So nothing else to complain about this vehicle or comment about it. So get ready to start off this time trial off in three, two, one, go. What the hell was that up, uh, mom? What's going on here? And not only that, let me get rid of the... Um, I'm paused game. Uh, say, get rid of the wind app because I used that in the last time trial with the Vert and Wild, I believe, where that vehicle flipped over on the last corner, so I used the wind app to just assist it to get to the start and finish line and off that damn grueling time trial. If you want to check that video out, pff, it was pretty much hell finishing that time trial at Italy at the time, so 80-something miles an hour, turn. I'm so cocky at this game. And we're auto steering to the right pretty hard, so take it slow next time. Just don't overestimate the goddamn four-wheel steering. I thought it would take the corner just as fine, but no, it didn't. Well, the four-wheel steering system in real life, what it was supposed to do was to reduce the turning radius. Like, if you'd be turning in, like, a tight circle or whatever, it will reduce the turning radius to the point where you're making a very, very tight turn in just tight situations. And also, it improves cornering and stability at, like, medium and medium-high speed, so you could, like, take corners with ease with the four-wheel steering system like this. Uh, kind of. Like, this here bridge, like, 70-ish miles an hour turn. Um, shyster. That hurt. Now we screwed up the left side of the vehicle, so I'm auto steering hard to the left, and we're getting some, like, jankiness with the steering to the point where it's just kind of like one oversteer, understeer, all the good stuff, but even though the percentage of the drivability in terms of where the tires stand, like the sportiness versus drivability factor, the turning radius, I think the tires stood in drivability, like, 97.6% to the point where it's perfect for drivability-wise, but, like, 82% in sportiness, so you're not going to be taking a lot of turns as well compared to most vehicles at a higher sportiness percentage rating. As I think about it now, I think the four-wheel steering system should have been used for, like, your... That was pretty close. Almost nailed myself on that rock there. I was about to say, it should be probably used, this type of system, for, like, sports cars. Like, your mid-wheelbase sports cars. Like, your 2.5, 2.3 meter wheelbase cars. But I think being that low, it's probably a little bit overkill to the point where you got some, like, snap over steer. So, first lap time is a 2 minutes, 20... Why is that counting? Um... What the hell? Uh, 2 minutes, 22 seconds, 350 milliseconds. Why was that counting when I hit the first checkpoint and stopped counting after hitting that? Like, what, what's going on here? Is my second lap gonna count or not? We're getting good split times of 6.3 seconds compared to the first lap, so... It's still counting as the first lap! Boy, you got a glitch in this game, better fix this PBG devs, or is this probably a mod issue that I'm having, but I don't know. Despite screwing up the steering line, but we're doing okay, but we're doing some of that hardcore driftiness. It's probably like a good drift vehicle if you get, like, the back tires to kick out, like, the back of the vehicle to kick out, and it just start doing some drift, so... Better than the first time, not smash yourselves at the guardrail of the bridge to the point where you get this loose auto steering to the left here and a good chance of losing control of this vehicle every time I steer, but it's doing okay, so brake here, and pump again, and doing fine, and ouch. I almost like broke the front right axle to the point where that tire would be useless. Useless steering left, probably definitely right, and I don't know about steering left, if that tire would have been broken at a whole axle, and uh, come on. Uh, come on. 
dude. Whew, dude. With that freaking uh, front left tire busted out with the steering alignment, almost drew myself off the freaking cliff and got carried away. A uh, progressive save my freaking car. Despite the wipeout, we somehow still got a good split time, so bottom out at close right there and break again. I'm like always timid on this corner for some odd reason. So back on the road, what about this split time? 1.5, lost quite a bit of time, so we're gonna get a better lap time, which that's pretty good. Don't wanna yield, so just blow through that, go to this checkpoint, and the final checkpoint to get the final time of the second lap of 2 minutes 20 seconds, 847 milliseconds, which gets a total time of 4 minutes 43 seconds, 197 milliseconds, which that would have been better if the car would have been in perfect condition. It'd probably be like a 441 or something, or 440, without having the front left tire almost broke it off. Because I was an egotistic wannabe NASCAR Formula One driver overestimating the four wheel steering system and pretty much screw up the front left portion of the vehicle. So go to free roam and crash this out somewhere. It's like this is your guardrail. Gonna slow it down as so, get a camera going and line myself up to the guardrail and hide the UI 60 times slow mo, go and I lost a front left headlight. I just noticed that. So resume physics 60 times slow mo, lost those headlights, those mirrors, and the back of the car, the back lights and everything, including the license plate. So we're stuck here full time. And the engine somehow still runs, but we got the radiator leaking. This is pretty bizarre. It's like most automation vehicles, expert, beam and G drive. It's like these vehicles are like bulletproof, crash proof, whatever. When you get like a severe collision of like where the engine is located and what the? What am I stuck on? So we are doing the freaking yo- Okay, I got it free. I was gonna say doing the yo-yo Jojo or some stupid crap or whatever. Damage-wise to this vehicle, so front end, crinkled in, caved in, downwards pretty good, and lifted the front tires up, which means we can't drive. Yep, as supposedly, because it's front-wheel drive, not rear-wheel drive, not 4x4, or an all-wheel drive vehicle. This here, is this part of the dash or something, or the door panel, which thankfully, uh, there's the engine right here. The engine is in the driver's and passenger's component here for some odd reason. Parts of the interior has collapsed, the steering wheel has majorly collapsed, including the door panels, window armrest controls, mirror controls, and most of the interior. So, you'd be dead if you're a driver. You'd probably be dead as a passenger. So, damage-wise, it's been messed up to the point where unfortunate fatalities involved, but it's a video game, so whatever. So last but not least, let's take this down to Brutal Slope 2.0 to see if a four-wheel steering system will be relevant as pretty much most cars nowadays trying to make them, like Acura and some other cars. So take you to the top of Brutal Slope right now. So here we are at Brutal Slope at the top of this. Why am I smoking right here for some odd reason? Like... What the hell? Why am I smoking? Is it because I'm in the gravel here or what? I mean, no radiator damage or whatever, but let's ignore that and skateboard at the top of the hill here to go down to the bottom of the ramp to launch ourselves at a stupidly high speed. Let's do this in the interior camera in first person. So let's get ready to go over our speed, over rev risk, and we get a better 0-62 to at 4.24 seconds of 177.85 feet. What does it sound like when the engine blows in first person view? So get... Mm, kind of loud like third person view. So bottom the ramp the speed we get 256 miles an hour the launch speed 195 ish, so we got the interior of the vehicle edge of the start of the holy illusion, but I swear break and oh Oh my god, so let's do a third person camera view of the crash here And then for the wedge pillar thingy, we'll do a first person crash So get myself lined up 60 times slow-mo go and wait 100 times here We go right set the reset the OV and front end is gone Quick going in and really quick up to the point where it's at the sunroof We got the brake lights and we got the tire about to come off right here. So go to 60 times debris is going all over the place like your beers, lights, license plates and everything so back to regular cam and full time. Flipping on over pretty good and back to our roof. The roof again, more flippiness and down our wheels. And boy look at all that debris from the lights and everything, the brake lights, do they work? I don't know. And pretty much everything from your lights, mirrors, license plates, everything is 
all over the place here. So damage-wise, this vehicle, in terms of wheelbase, we really scrunch this down to the point where you call this thing a Smart 4-2, aka a Smart Car or something. We got the rear tires here, front tire there, and the body. Oh my god. So let's take a look at the interior in just a sec. So we got the engine, it seems like, completely exposed right here, including parts of the seats here. This side, we got that tire missing, the rear of the vehicle. Oh boy. So interior-wise, I'm right here. So get myself back in. I've been ejected despite having a seatbelt on. So let's take a look at the front. <laughs> my, oh my god. F. Yes, F's in the chat for this driver. Same thing for the passenger, this camera, these seats that are leaning back like Fat Joe or something, but boy, you would not survive whatsoever. Put it that way. So last part of the video with the engine somehow still smoking, let's skateboard at the top of this hill here to crash ourselves down at a square block, aka a wedge thingy, which you get yourselves a wedge shape book at your vehicle when you crash at it at a very high speed. And again, first person view, going way past 160, 170, past the speed of 188 miles per hour, which is pretty much like your stereotypical car diagnostic things where it says 188, and then the 18 disappears, and at zero miles an hour. So, speed we get, uh, I'm thinking 260 upon crashing at the square block here, wedging our vehicle in at a very high speed. So high DUI, first person crash, go. Do a first person crash and probably do an ex- Do first person all the way, so first person. Jesus Christ! So, the front of the vehicle has been mangled up completely. Let's just stop doing that, go to exterior camera. So, boy, look at the vehicle so full time. Like that, the vehicle has been completely demolished. The hazards are going off because impact detected stopping car like always. I don't, I don't know what's, why it's doing that for a 1988 vehicle. So let's spawn it down here and get the aftermath of destruction of this here vehicle. So go to here and look at this damn mess. We got the debris pretty much in one spot here from your mirrors, brake lights, indicators, headlights, more stuff here, which I can't really recognize by this because of this wreckage here. So nothing a whole lot of this vehicle other than being wedged in pre pretty good. And this vehicle, this ba the back right portion of the vehicle has turned into a shank. Like the left side's okay. I mean, it is damaged, but left side, okay. R back right. You got this spike here, this spike, this spike, more of these spikes, all these loose polygons to the point where you just walk into here and psh, pierce your face, brain, stomach, lungs, wherever. Wherever you touch your body part in this thing, yeah, it's gonna hurt pretty bad. So that'll do it with automation and BMG drive with the Turbo Viceroy Relic 4WS. For this vehicle being a four-wheel steering system, I mean, it does work as you see here, but... With this vehicle implemented here with the four-wheel steering system, I think it's a bit overkill, yet unique. So if you were to take this onto a track and race it, don't really do so. Just take it to the streets, a highway, a municipal road, backcountry roads, your private driveway, wherever. That's pretty much the good use of the four-wheel steering system, not on a racetrack. But in terms of looks and everything, it looks pretty nice of a 1980s premium near-luxury vehicle that pretty much matches with Chrysler back in the day when they were a luxury brand. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. And also, check out my social media down in the description below. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.